Good morning, everybody. I'm Scott Light. We welcome you to Sunday Square Off today. Our guests this morning are former Republican candidate for governor Don Goldwater, Jessica Pacheco with the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and radio talk show host Jeff Farias. Hi, everybody. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. How are you thanks, doing? thanks for being here. Let's start off. Sheriff Joe Arpaio unveils his hotline to report undocumented immigrants. You just heard a soundbite from him. His critics are already calling this racial profiling. So first of all, is it is it legal what he's doing, Don, or do you call this a good tool for police? Well, I think it's an additional tool for uh, police. I don't believe it's a racial profiling because the color of immigration is green. There isn't a country in the United States that is not, or excuse me, a country in the world that is not represented in the United States by illegal aliens. We have the Homeland Security Hotline. We have the Silent Witness Program. Now we have Sheriff Joe Arpaio. We are doing what Congress and the President of the United States has asked us to do. It's not just an issue of illegal immigration. The citizens of the United States need to stay aware because we have other factions coming in, drug smugglers. We have factions coming in of people trying to uh, hurt the United States. I think it's a good thing. Jessica, jump in here. Frankly, we think it's a misprioritization of funds. We would much rather see the sheriff's office very vigorously attacking identity theft. We're number one in the country on mm -hmm. identity theft. And um, we'd like to see our tax dollars spent wisely. And we question whether or not setting up a hotline, which gets you a whole bunch of headlines, right. um, but is, does the it do anything use, to stop is the best use of our tax dollars. Jeff? Well, I think the, our sheriff is a very uh, seasoned and clever politician. I think he recognizes that a hotline is a controversial issue. It's going to generate a lot of buzz uh, in the media. The sad part of the story is that it tends to pit neighbor against neighbor. Uh, it creates a climate of suspicion and, and fear in our communities. And it is, in a sense, racial profiling, but it takes the onus of racial profiling off of the sheriff's department and puts it on the citizens. So the sheriff can now... Uh, not say he's not racial profiling, he's just responding to tips from, from people in the community. Jump in here. Well, I think, you know, you're missing something here because we have neighborhood uh, block watch programs. Uh, if you call this uh, hotline uh, racial profiling, then you have to call the hotlines that I just talked about racial profiling. It's not the only tool that the sheriff's using. It's an additional tool the sheriff's using. And frankly, he's proven to be quite effective when it comes to illegal immigration. He was the first organization out there uh, in crime fighting in the state of Arizona that went after illegal aliens. We have a serious problem with the illegal aliens in the state. It's costing the state over three billion dollars annually to educate, medicate, and incarcerate illegal aliens. It's a situation that must be stopped. You can't go halfway. But what if somebody calls, they call the hotline, police go out and they investigate and they find out, oh, you know what, they're a legal resident or a legal citizen. Wouldn't that be a violation of their civil rights? Well, well I'd like to know how you can tell. When I'm walking well, sure. down the street, I can't tell whether somebody has papers or not. And I'm confused as to how this hotline helps people tell whether or not people are here legally. We actually had someone, from, a host from 1480, called uh, the sheriff's department to find out what exactly is suspicious behavior that mm -hmm. they're looking for. We were told people driving SUVs, people driving vans, uh, a pickup truck with people sitting in, in the back of it, or cars following one another closely. Uh, anyone who's driven around the valley know there are a lot of SUVs around here, and many of them just driven by a, a single parent. And somebody said that on the hotline? On the hotline. Look for a, a, large SUVs. I drive an SUV. <laughs> I so drive an SUV, too, but if you just remember, and it was reported in the, the paper yesterday, early morning this morning, that uh, police were following a large van uh, uh, that was driving uh, with accompanying vehicles. They had some suspicion on it. They kept drive, driving, uh, following the van, stuff like that. The van actually stopped, the, the, the uh, occupants of the truck jumped out and ran. They found a ton of marijuana in there. So suspicious behavior, I think that's the key issue to this thing. You don't walk down the street and see this person or that person standing on the street and go, oh, I think that's an illegal alien. I'm going to call him in. I mean, that's not, le that's not uh, legitimate. But what you do do is you sit down and you see suspicious activity. Um, you know, Wouldn't it, it be better than to call the hotline um, just a regular crime hotline? Okay. So if you see any sort of suspicious behavior, if somebody's hitting somebody else or engaging in something that obviously looks like they shouldn't be doing that, then they should absolutely call a hotline. But to focus in on an immigration type hotline that absolutely leads to the sort of behaviors, Don, that you're outlining that we don't want to see. 
Do you think the hotline's legal? Like, would the chamber ever challenge this on a, on a legality standpoint? I don't know whether the hotline's mm -hmm. legal or not, but how, however, what I do know is legal, and what we need to concentrate and make sure that we're giving this message to the community is that if you see a crime being committed, by all means, call the authorities, and you need to, you need to do that immediately. All right, let me do this. Here's one thing I need to do is take a commercial break, but let's tell folks what we have still ahead for you on Sunday Square Off this morning. Senator John Kyle wants $3 billion extra dollars for border security. Will that silence the critics who say that the senator has gone soft on immigration policy? Also, the Arizona Chamber of Commerce announces its strategy to deal with the employer sanctions bill. Sunday Square Off is coming right back.